Okay, here we are back again. If you look down here with the LEDs, you'll see that they get brighter and dimmer and go on and off. Again, this is a, another PIC program. It's a PIC 16F628A. It's using the pulse width modulators and a, basically a loop program to um, vary the duty cycle on the pulse width output. Uh, total bytes are 80. That's right, 80 bytes. If this had been done in C, it would be a couple of kilobytes probably, but 80 bytes out of 2048, not bad. Okay, let's discuss uh, duty cycle a little bit. Let's look at the drawing here, largely in the center. Let me move that down to center it just a little better for you. Here's some typical um, pulse width modulated square waves. 10%, 50%, 90%. So what does that really mean? There's three components really to a pulse width modulated waveform, in this case being digital. Um, there is frequency, there is period, and there's on time. Um, period is the reciprocal of frequency. The period of a thousand hertz is one millisecond. The period being given in time, as where the frequency, of course, is in hertz. Let's look here at the center 50% duty cycle. Let us say for argument that this is a one kilohertz well what do you know it looks like a square wave doesn't it hmm let's talk about that okay pretending that this is a has a period of one millisecond that means from this point to this point has a uh, time of one millisecond to be on 50 percent of the time it would have to be on 0.5 milliseconds. So the formula really for duty cycle is on time, in this case 0.5 milliseconds, divided by period, which in this case is 1 millisecond, times 100 will give you a percentage. Okay, let's look again. While this was what I worked out for the uh, pick 18F2550 on one of my pages, it works exactly the same way for uh, as it does for the C, um, they call it the CCP1 module in the case of the 16F628. And of course, it's also output on RB3 on either chip. But nonetheless, let's look at what we're dealing with here. Okay, by design you can only have the PWM output on RB3 on both chips. You have to set up Tris B. That particular bit has to be an output. If you set it as an input, you get nothing. Now this is what was fun here. Look at this formula. PWM period equals PR2 plus 1 times 4 times toss times timer to prescale value. Now when I saw first saw that I had to be thinking you gotta be kidding me because they didn't define anything that made any sense. So I actually had to sit down and work the problem out backwards. But it's not so bad once you know what's going on. Alright, let's use the formula. I want to configure this for a 5000 Hertz output. That's going to be, okay, for 5,000 hertz, I'm going to have to get the period, which is 1 divided by 5,000, that's 0 .002. That's your PWM period. Okay, in the case of uh, the 2550, it was operating at 48 megahertz, but if you know anything, oh, by the way, let's Let's talk about what they do in both of these chips, and apparently most of the PIC chips, and to a large degree the uh, Arduino 2, I believe, 
is they're using timer 2. Timer 2 is an 8-bit timer. It has a period register, it has a timer register, and it has a prescaler. Okay, so let's go on back through here, keeping that in mind. So we know our PWM period is um, 200 microseconds, or 0.2 milliseconds. The crystal frequency, of course, is operating at 48 megahertz. Okay, TOS, or T oscillator, is something like 1 divided by... 40 or 1 over it comes out to be the reciprocal of 12 megahertz 8.33 e to the minus eighth you have to have a scientific calculator i set up the timer 2 prescale as 16 that's the T tmr2 prescale then we have what is called when you work this out mathematically you come out with a value of 149. That goes in register PR2. This is what sets your frequency. This sets your frequency. So the value in PR2 combined with the uh, timer 2 prescaler value um, is what determines your frequency component. Now I read this and I have a frequency and period counter came out exactly 5 kilohertz. Okay, so we ended up with a value of 149 for PR2 and this value will vary depending on the frequency you use. Okay, now we have timer 2 control and I can't do anything with PR2 until I turn on the timer. And in this case, this code here um, turns on timer 2 and, and sets it for a prescale of divide by 16. So far, so good. Describes the bits. Bit 7 is nothing. 6 through 3 is post scale, not used here. Bit 2 will turn on the timer. 1 is timer on, 2 is timer off. And the first two bits um, sets the uh, prescale. And if you notice back up here, I had one, so I have 1, 1, 1, X, in this case 1, 1, I get a prescale of 16. 1 on bit 2, which is right there, turns on my timer. Off we go. Moving on down. Now we're going to come to a register called CCPR2L. Actually, on the other chip, it would be CCPR1L. This particular PIC chip has two pulse width modulation units. I happen to be using the second one but it works the same way. It's a 10-bit value. Now, it's a 10-bit value here. I've turned it off for the time being until I am ready to turn it on. Um, the duty, it's a 10-bit value for duty cycle. Most people ignore the bottom two bits. Now, eight of the, uh, eight, your, your eight, of the 10 bits, your eight most significant bits are in CCPR1L or 2L, whichever one you're using. Okay, so it's turned off for now. I didn't put nothing in it. Um, I haven't turned on the unit. Down here, you will have to come to CCPR2C um, on. This is, this is self-explanatory up here. These last four, all it does is set up the uh, system in the pulse width modulation mode. Moving a little further down. To calculate the duty cycle, well, you get this thing, PWM duty cycle equals uh, those 10 bits values, dimes toss again, times the timer to prescale, 
works out pretty much the same. The only difference is that I didn't multiply by 4 like I did upstairs earlier on. There was also where I multiplied before. Nonetheless, for a 50% duty cycle, all of this worked out to a value of 75. So, let's run back upstairs where we started. And you notice something about this. Back up here, we calculated 149 for PR2. That gives me 5 kilohertz. Here to CC PR2L, it's 75. It's half the value of the 149, or so about half. So, guess what? 100% duty cycle will be 149. Half 50% uh, duty cycle is going to be half of 149, which is about 75. We're, remember, we're not, we can't use fractions here. We're having to use, these are 8-bit registers. Note, these are all 8-bit registers. So that gives you some idea how to calculate this stuff.